Hey plant lovers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm just going to be doing some really chilled out plant chores. I have a few things on my list that I need to do so maybe you also have some stuff you need to get done. Why not grab it and we will do it together. The first job I want to do is to pop these two Syngonians into the same pot together. They're both Syngonian pixie and I had split these up originally because they had aphids and I needed them to be a little less dense for me to be able to check them but they're now completely free from aphids. I'll just do one last check. They're all good so I want to put them back into the same pot just so that I can combine them and have um, a few less, well one less pot to manage as I have a lot of plants so I'm looking to kind of combine plants wherever I can. So I don't think these guys are going to need a pot that's too much bigger. I think one of these will probably do it. Let's see. I need to find out what's going on with the roots first. Hopefully the roots are healthy. The plants certainly aren't having any problems, so I don't anticipate any problems. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Have a look. I think those roots, oh, there are a couple that have rotted. Oh no, please don't be rotting. These guys were my struggle plants that I got from Plants for All Seasons. A lot of the plants that I got from them have unfortunately ended up with not only, not only the aphids, that they came with but they were also very wet and at the time of getting them they weren't you know they didn't appear to be rotting but some of them have had some problems with that I think that might just be the one there so mm, I think it's okay mm, that's a shame there are some healthy roots too, there's just a few that are, you can see they have healthy roots as well. Unfortunately because the plants that I received from Plants for All Seasons were in a bit of a bad way, they had pests and I think they had soaked the soil as well. Pretty, it was pretty saturated when I received the plants so yeah, I think a combination of that has maybe given the plants some issues, but let's hope that these guys will be okay. I'm going to just see if this one also has any rot. Hopefully I've caught it in time because, yeah, I would like these plants to survive, but as I say, they just, did, they just didn't have the best start really. Um, Just praying this one will be okay. Kind of glad I checked now because, yeah. No, I think this, I think this one's okay actually. That's really good. Didn't see any rot on that one. It's kind of strange that the other one had a few bits at the end. But yeah, that's it. Is what it is. So I'm going to be. Popping these, yes, in a, in a small pot. I've put them all in the same small pot because that other one had a little bit of a... So I won't be upgrading the size of the pot there. I think if I just pop them both in here, that should be fine. And I'm just going to hope that they survive. Yeah, even though the plants that I got from Plants for All Seasons were a really good price, I'm wary now of 
kind of going for something just because it's a good price because yeah my experience wasn't that great and it wasn't really the fact that there were problems with plants that was an issue really it was the fact that they did not reply to my support email I didn't get any response from customer support and of course that would have made all the difference of course everyone every business is going to have problems but it's how they deal with them that is the important thing not the fact that there are problems so you know they could have replied and kind of you know just given some customer service really and that would have that would have obviously been okay then because then they would have proved themselves to be a trustworthy company that look after their customers even when there are problems because as I say you know I'm sure that every single nursery that keeps plants has pests um, and it's not really I'm not shaming them for the plants coming with pests it's more that they didn't bother to respond to me when I emailed and you know I think also the fact that they seem to flood the plants with water before sending them is not necessarily a good idea I mean I can see why they did that I suppose it was because they didn't want the plants drying out in transit but the trouble is if you just flood a plant with water it can just you know, end up with root rot, especially if it wasn't ready, quite ready for water yet, and they just thought, oh, I'll water that for the journey. But yeah, I'm not going to shop there again, and it's a real shame because there's loads of plants on their site that I would have wanted to get, and ones that you can't actually get, or at least I can't find on other websites. So I definitely would have been a repeat customer. Um, as I say, the, the problems I had, it wouldn't have been an issue. It was just the fact that they didn't bother to get back to me. And it's been quite some time now, and they've had quite a long time. It must be months now at this stage. They haven't replied. Nothing at all. So, yeah. But anyway, you live and you learn. Well... That kind of looks nice. It's a nice full plant now. Hopefully this plant will be okay. It, as I say, it's been on the struggle bus a bit, so there's a chance it might not, but I'm going to do my best for it. I think what I'll do with this one now is leave it all in the same pot. And this is a syngonium and it is a vining plant and I can see it is starting to sort of vine, but my plan is not to give it any support until probably next year, next season, I'm just going to let it grow. I'm, I won't be doing anything else to it now. I've left it a really good length of time before doing this, potting them back up. So hopefully this shouldn't be too stressful. But yeah, I'm just going to let it do its thing now, really, and recover and just do some growing. And then next summer of next year, sort of spring summer I shall probably give it some support maybe we'll see how we go but, but they're back together now so it's nice to get them potted up back together and there we go a lovely full syngonium it is a really nice plant and hopefully now it will survive I probably won't water this one straight away just because that one had a little bit of rot I don't want to kind of tempt fate so I'll just leave it for a bit let it dry out a bit and yeah then then I shall water it but yeah let's hope for the best it looks really nice right now but this is the thing isn't it you never know with plants they can just turn but let's hope they'll be okay okay that's one down So the next job I wanted to do is I want to put my pink princess on a pole. And I have this one here that I'm going to put it on. And I'm just hoping that it's going to sort of, is it going to fit in there? I'm going to put it in there because the pot can't be too big because the pink princess is still quite a small plant. So let's get the plant and see 
Let's see if it fits. The last thing I want to do is give this plant too big a pot and then end up with root rot again because I do not like root rot. It is horrible. And that new leaf there, it's not quite out yet, but I want to do this now because this is, it's, it's in need of support. It's very much asking for something for support. So let's have a look what's going on in there. It should be fairly dry in here, I think. Let's have a look. Dreading this. I'm really hoping and praying that the roots are okay. Yeah, they look okay. And it has pink. Does it have pink roots as well? Oh my gosh, it does. I did not notice that before. I don't know if you can see there, but the, the roots are kind of tinged pink too. I, I mean, maybe it seems obvious, but I did not realize that. Okay, anyway, onwards. Is this pot going to be suitable? Let's see. I probably would have liked to have kept it a little bit smaller, if I'm honest. Right, anyway. I'd almost like to keep it in here, but I don't think this pole, well, maybe it will. Actually, I've decided I'm going to just put it up into this pot. You can see there isn't a huge amount of difference, but this one will just have a little bit of extra room, a very small amount of extra room for that pole. Plus it's purple and, you know, purple goes with pink, doesn't it? So what's not to like? Okay, let's try to position this now. Yeah, that'll be fine. I shan't be worried about that one. Now, where do I put this pole? Where is the back of this? I guess where the aerial roots are coming. So they're kind of coming out all around though, so I don't know. Um, gosh. There are aerial roots all the way around, and I'm not sure which way around it goes. How do you determine such a thing? Um, how do I want it to look? Let's see. I think I want that to be the front. So yeah, let's let's make this the back. I'm just winging it. I don't know. It's a little bit more obvious on, say, a monstera where the back is, but. And I should have brought my twine over. I will have to reach for it. Okay, so this obviously looks a little bit silly whilst it's small, but of course, it's, it's kind of easier to get plants on poles before they get big in a way, so that it can then climb up. But And the reason I don't use moss poles is because moss poles take a lot of maintenance and I hear a lot of issues that people get keeping them moist and also having to keep, keep moistening it, the worry about root rot possibly if water transfers down into the pot. And just, it, it's really the maintenance for me. I, I'm not prepared to put that much time into maintaining moss poles. So it's just not for me. It's a very personal thing, of course. Some people may much prefer moss poles and hate these, and that's absolutely fine. But this for me is just no fuss, and I don't have to worry. And also, I think they do I know there's an argument for they don't size up as much if you don't put them on a moss pole because their aerial roots don't go into it. But I mean, my philodendron silver sword is on a cocoa coir pole like this and it is sizing up, so I don't know. I think it's okay. As I say, I think it's just a personal thing, so you know. 
depends what you like, really, above everything else. Now, the issue I've got just now is this little baby one, because there's a couple of little babies here in the pot, and it's kind of getting swamped there. I just want to make sure I don't quite... I don't want to swamp it in. Well, I should say I don't want to bury it, but let's see. Well, I need to try and keep hold of this at the moment because I don't think it's all that secure at this, at this stage. Weirdly, actually, the babies that are in here, you know when you buy a plant, you kind of get the main plant and then there might be another one or two very small ones that haven't caught up yet. You, you often find that with plants. I think they probably do it so that if, you know, one or two fails, there's another option there. But anyway, usually they tend to die, I find, in my experience. But these ones in this pot seem to be doing very well, and I'm not really sure why. I'm not complaining, but I'm just hoping that this isn't going to kind of affect them. All right, I have no idea if I've really put that round the right way, if I'm honest with you. But I'm here now and it's done, so let's just go with it. Hope for the best. I'm sure if there are any kind of support pole aficionados out there, you could tell me if I'm doing this wrong. But for me, it's fine, you know. This plant for me is kind of a bit of fun. It's... I've said it before, it doesn't have the most stable variegation and really I'm just, I'm just experimenting and seeing what happens with this plant. It's kind of interesting to see what pink comes out and what doesn't. A pot. I'm going to take my peace lily out of there, really remove it from its pot because I think, let's see. This might be a good pot because it is purple <laughs> and it's also fairly heavy and I think it could support the weight of this. Yes. Am I going to tie this? I'm not sure there's even a need for me to tie it, to be honest. Um, let me just see how I want to position this on. I think I'm, I'm almost certain I must have got this the wrong way around. But, oh, what have I done? I think there, that's better. Yes. What do you think? I know, it, as I say, it looks a bit silly. I may not keep it in this pot, but this is going to do for now. Okay, let me just fill the rest of this pot up then. I'm using the same soil because there's nothing wrong with it. This stuff is expensive. Well, I mean, it's not expensive, but it's, you know, it adds up, let's say, over the, uh, over the, the year. If you have a lot of plants, it does add up. So I don't really like to waste it. I wouldn't reuse soil if it is, has been with a plant with root rot or pests or something like that, but this is just fine, so it's no problem. I've got a feeling I might have done those baby ones a bad service, but I'm just gonna have to stop worrying about that. That will do. And um, yeah. I'm hoping this pole is going to stay in situ here. Really watering in is something that's going to be quite useful here because it will kind of solidify the, the pole into place, if you know what I mean. But for now, I'm just going to juggle and pop that in there. And then it at least has a little bit of something to lean against there. I think that should do just fine. I may just, as I say, lean it against something for now and 
hope for the best. But yeah, I shall just pop back to one side very, very carefully. And Okay, another thing, hang on, that looks like it's about to fall. Please don't fall. Okay, I'm putting all my trust in that now. As I was saying, another thing I want to do is check this Syngonium elbow. Um, now this is another one that came from Plants for All Seasons and this is how it's looking now. Uh, show you that side. You can see it's looking quite bare and I will put a picture on screen now. This is how it looked before when I first got it. And yeah, it's just lost leaf after leaf and I don't know whether that's down to the fact that it had aphids. It could have been, it did get quite stressed. But now I'm at the point where I'm thinking, is this plant suffering from root rot? I just want to check because time is of the essence if a plant has root rot and it needs to be dealt with. Otherwise, the plant will just die very quickly. But the plan is with this one, if it does have root rot, um, there's quite good propagation possibilities with this one. So. I should be able to save the plants, but um, it came in this pot, which I think might be quite big for it now. I think possibly um, because it's lost so many leaves, it looks a bit silly now, but we shall see what's going on. Please, fingers crossed, cross your fingers for me. Oh no, please let this be good news. Oh. Oh. What is going on here? This has recently been watered. Do you have root rot? Um, yes, you do, I think. Yes, it does, okay. Right, well, I'm glad I checked then. This plant does have root rot, and yeah, that's really sad. Uh, thank goodness I checked. Hmm. Is that vine okay? Because this one seems okay compared to the others. It seems a little less stressed. Hmm, let's just have some. Okay, I'm going to chop and prop. Um, I have no option really and I really want to save this plant. Luckily for me it does have some chop and prop possibilities so let me go clean my scissors and let's chop up this Syngonium elbow. So yeah this was the worst possible outcome but at least I checked because to be honest with you because the plant had stopped yellowing I was thinking maybe it's not root rot but the fact that I checked I'm really glad now because I could have just lost the whole plant if I hadn't have checked. So now we're going to see what I can chop from this plant. I think I can get one there. What did I do with those scissors? There they are. I've just cleaned these so they're nice and clean. And I think that one has an aerial root there, so... Yeah, I think I can... I think I can use that. Might as well chop that off. And then what I shall do is, once I've chopped this up, I will take them to the sink and give them a very good wash. And then pop them in some water and hope that they will root. So we'll see what happens. That one has, I think, got a root there. Let's just make sure I've cut off all the um, rotted bits. We do not want those on there. Yep. So that's two. Let's see, can I get one out of this? This one had a new leaf coming through. Yep. 
Yes, let's get that a little chunk there. And then I've got this kind of long vine, which is kind of lucky really, isn't it? If we look at the, um, the bright side here, because I can get lots of cuttings from this. And and each one of these, of course, will be a new vine of its own. So if you try and look at it like that, then you could think of it, you know, think of the positives. I'll get more plants out of it, hopefully. So I'm just going to cut this between the nodes. So each one has a node. And I think I will do these in water because I want to keep an eye on them. I do not trust them in soil at all. They probably would work in soil, but I'd like to monitor these. Since they've not had the best start in life, never mind. Worse things than that, aren't there? I'm not going to keep any of those roots on because I just want a fresh start here. Complete fresh start, I want everything removed. I think that's got an aerial root there, yes. Um, can we get one more here, I think? I think we might be able to. Let's see. Yeah, that one does have an aerial root. Okay, I'm just hoping and praying that these root and all this stuff will have to go in the bin. As I say, I can't reuse soil that has rot. But I will wash the pot and I will reuse that, so. Yeah. Oh. I can get that off. Okay, so I've just given them a really good wash in the sink so they are nice and clean. It's just something I like to do when I take propagations. And I'm now going to just dip them in rooting powder and then I'm going to put them all in this glass container. And I'm certainly not going to dwell on the loss of this plant, the fact that I'm having to propagate it. Instead, I'm going to just, oh, that one's not going to work because it's got nothing to hold on with. I'll have to put that one in something else. Yeah, I'm not going to kind of focus on the negative here. I'm just going to look forward to seeing these plants grow and root because it doesn't get me anywhere focusing on the negative, does it? Just going to hope that this works out. I mean, I didn't really have a choice. The only thing I could have done really was propagate this plant They don't fit awfully well into this container. I may have to rethink that, but. I'm making a real pig's ear of this. <laughs> yeah, they're a little bit awkward because they're so small and it's very difficult to kind of keep them in contact with the water, so I may have to rethink this later, but for now it will do. And I do have quite a lot of them here, which is cool. As I say, each of these plants will equal one new vine, so Supposing that most of them do root, I should in the long run have an even fuller plant. 
So, yeah, I'm hoping that that will be the case for sure. I'm feeling quite positive about this. I think they're going to be fine. Not quite so positive about my propagation technique here. As I say, it does seem a bit, they're just kind of floating and this isn't the best container. I may have to do a bit of rejigging, but that'll do for now, as I say. So there we go. They're all in water and let's just pray for them now. <laughs> that's all we can do. And I just hope that they will root. So yeah, that's all I can do. Glad I checked. So yeah, I think that's the end of the video, guys. I'm gonna go and chill out now. I hope you really enjoyed the video today. I hope you got some plant chills done or maybe you just chilled out. Whatever you did, if you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing for more plant content from me. And until next time, guys, as always, look after your plants and look after yourself.